we will take up chapter heredity of class 10 science. The learning objectives of today's session are knowledge about heredity, understand the accumulation of variations during reproduction, information about expressions of inherited characters, to know about dominant and recessive nature of characters, analyze and interpret the data that living organisms inherit in the form of traits from the parents to know Mendel's contribution towards the inheritance of traits and their expression, to know about laws of inheritance and determination of sex in human. Dear students, as you know about reproductive process in different organisms like the other life processes and we have seen that reproductive process give rise to new individuals that are similar but subtly different. Why? The passage or transmission of characters from parents to offsprings is known as inheritance or heredity. Dear students, let us discuss about Mendel's observation of dihybrid cross. He observed that in F1 generation all the seeds had round shape and yellow color showing that these are dominant traits as you can observe through the given picture. He then raised plants from F1 generation seeds and allowed the flowers to self pollinate to produce the seeds of F2 generation. He observed the appearance of four types of combination with two parental combinations round, green and wrinkled yellow and got two new combinations round, yellow and wrinkled green in the phenotypic ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So, we can conclude it as if the interpretations of Mendelian experiments are correct, then both parents must be contributing equally to the DNA of the progeny during sexual reproduction. If both parents can help determine the trait in the progeny, both parents must be contributing a copy of the same gene. This means that each pea plant must have two sets of all genes, one inherited from each parent. For this mechanism to work, each germ cell must have only one gene set. Now, we will study the all concluding informations in the form of laws of inheritance. On the basis of above observations, Mendel has concluded the following laws. One factor is inherited by the F1 offspring from each parent during fertilization, but only one character is expressed and is called as the dominant character. The character which is not expressed is called the recessive character. This is known as law of dominance. Mendel considered these factors as carriers of hereditary information from parents to offsprings. At the time of reproduction, when gametes are formed, these factors segregate so that each gamete receives only one factor of each character. This is known as law of segregation. Inheritance of factors controlling a particular trait in an organism is independent of the other. This is called as law of independent assortment. Hence, at the time of reproduction, two pairs of factors, each of the two traits segregated independently during gamete formation and randomly formed combinations in the F2 generation. This is why new combinations appeared along with parental combinations. Dear students, 
how does the mechanism of heredity work? Cellular DNA is the information source for making proteins in the cell. A section of DNA that provides information for one protein is called the gene for that protein. How do proteins control the characteristics that we are discussing here? Let us take the example of tallness as a characteristics. We know that tall plants have hormones that can trigger growth. Plant height can thus depend on the amount of a particular plant hormone. The amount of the plant hormone made will depend on the efficiency of the process for making it. Consider now an enzyme that is important for this process. If this enzyme works efficiently, a lot of hormone will be made and the plant will be tall. If the gene for that enzyme has an alteration that makes the enzyme less efficient, the amount of hormone will be less and the plant will be short. Thus, genes control characteristics or traits. In this way, the traits gets expressed in future generations. Now the question may arise in your mind that what about the sex of organisms and also in humans? How does it come in next generations? Dear students, let us discuss about sex determination. The mechanism of determining the sex of an individual is called sex determination. Human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes in the nucleus of each cell. Among these 22 pairs are autosomes and one pair or two chromosomes are sex chromosomes X and Y. A female has 22 pairs of autosomes and two X chromosomes. Hence, all female gametes or ova will have only X chromosome or is homogametic. A male has 22 pairs of autosomes, one X chromosome and one Y chromosome and is heterogametic. 50% of the male gametes or sperms will have X chromosomes and 50% of them will have Y chromosomes. The sex of a child depends upon what happens at fertilization. You can see the given figure if a sperm carrying X chromosome fertilizes an ovum or egg which carries X chromosome then the offspring will be a female. If a sperm carrying Y chromosome fertilizes an ovum or egg which carries X chromosome then the offspring will be a male. Hence, it is the sperm which determines the sex of an offspring. It is very interesting to know that some organisms change their sex. Is it possible? Let us see. In some other cases, sex is determined by environmental factor. In some reptiles, the temperature at which the fertilized egg is incubated before hatching is important for determining the sex of offspring. Example 1 in turtles, high incubation temperature results in development of female progeny while a temperature below 28 degree centigrade produces only males. In other animals, example snails, individuals can change sex indicating that sex is not genetically determined here. Students, now we have come to understood the chapter heredity and learnt about the following points. First, about heredity and variations. Second, knowledge of variations during reproduction. Third, information about traits inherited and acquired. Four, information about the rules for inheritance of traits by Mendel's contributions. 
5. Knowledge about 7 pair of contrasting characters in pea plant. 6. Monohybrid and dihybrid cross. 7. Information about the expressions of traits in generations. 8. Mechanism by which sex determination is done in humans. Dear students, it's time to note down your assignments related to today's session. First, Mendel is known as father of genetics. Give reason why. What is meant by a pair of contrasting characters? How is variation brought in the progeny in sexually reproducing organisms? How traits are expressed? Traits may be dominant or recessive. How do Mendel's experiments explain it? What do you understand about independent inheritance of traits? Write the phenotypic and genotypic ratio of monohybrid cross in pea plant. How the sex of a newborn is determined in humans? With this, we have come to the end of today's session. I hope you all have enjoyed it. Thank you.